All right, so for question four, what we need to do is recognize and pull out the rules here that, that we're going to be using. So what I could do, first of all, is replace that square root with um, to the power of a half, because we should know that by now from our indices, that if we have um, a square root involved, what we really have is all of that to the power of a half. Now that's going to help me to spot that this is going to be the chain rule. Um, so there's going to be a few steps that we need to do here. So the chain rule um, says that we need to um, get dy dx. We're going to have to multiply down by the power here. We're going to keep the bracket the same. And we're going to take one off the power. So we're going to have to the power of minus a half. And then we're going to have to multiply by the differential of what was in the bracket here. Now that's going to be a bit of hard work because it itself is one of the rules and it is the um, quotient rule. So I'm going to have to figure out what is the differential that goes in the bracket here. Now to do that, I'm going to write it out over here and I'm going to say that it was sine of x all over 1 minus cos x. And I'm going to label each of the parts for myself as u and v. So there's my u and here is my v. And I'm going to then work on differentiating each of those individually. So I'm going to have u is equal to that, v is equal to 1 minus cos x. And then I'm going to have to find du dx and dv dx. So it's good practice to always just write these out anyway, um, whether you're asked for them or not. So sine x is going to be then going to cos of x. That's nice and straightforward. It's from the log tables. dv dx then is going to be, dv dx is going to be 1 is a constant, so that goes to 0. And then we have minus cos x. Now the minus is there, but cos x goes to minus sine x. And what we have is a minus minus, which will go to a plus sine x. So nice and um, straightforward for those two uh, differentials there. Now, how am I going to combine those together then? We're going to have um, dy dx here, following the rule um, for the quotient rule, is going to be v, which is 1 minus cos x, multiplied then by our differential of um, u, so du dx, which is going to be cos x. So cos x inside there. Um, it's going to be v du dx minus um, u dv dx. So it's going to be minus sine dv dx. So at this stage, I'm starting to notice that I'm going to be using trig identities. And if you're not sure about what I mean by that, please go back and revise trig identities. Because on the bottom here then as well, I'm going to get 1 minus cos x squared. So I'm just filling into the, the quotient rule formula for myself and when I multiply out the top line what I would get is I would get 1 multiplied by cos x and that's just going to be cos x then I have minus cos x by cos x which is going to be minus cos of x and it's all squared so I could write it like that and then I'm going to have minus and then it's going to be sine x by sine x which is going to be sine squared x and that's all over 1 minus cos x all squared. Now what I'm going to be able to do with this is factorize out the minus and I could say they both have a minus in common so put it here and I have cos squared x plus sine squared x. That should be something that is very familiar to you from your trig identities, whenever you have cos squared x plus sine squared x, that is the same as having 1. So that has a value of 1. So we're going to have cos x minus 1, and it's going to be all over 1 minus cos x all squared. Now, what we can see when we look at our numerator and denominator here is that they are very, very similar. Um, and we can use algebra to um, simplify this further. So what I could do here is I could multiply the top by minus 1 and multiply the bottom by minus 1. And what that's going to allow me to do here then 
is write this top line as minus cos x plus 1 all over, and I'm just going to leave my minus 1 outside for a second, so minus 1, 1 minus cos x all squared. And why I have done this? Well, I can write the top as 1 minus cos x, like so. Just rearranging it so that I have the 1 out the front and the minus cos x at the back. And then I have minus 1. And then on the bottom, I could write this as 1 minus cos x by 1 minus cos x. So instead of writing 1 minus cos x squared, I could write it out in full. And that is 1 minus cos x by itself. Why I have done that then is if we look at what's happening, we have 1 minus cos x multiplied in on the top and 1 minus cos x multiplied in on the bottom and these will divide to give us 1. So we are left with 1 all over 1 minus cos x multiplied by minus 1 which I could say is divide the top part by minus 1 so I would get minus 1 all over 1 minus cos x. So all of that work gives us dy dx in its simplest form. Now we were interested in this because our chain rule was going to use it. So our chain rule needed the differential of our um, original. So I'm going to go back up and inside here then, that's the goal. We were looking for the differential of our bracket inside here. And what we now know is that that works out to be minus one all over one minus cos x. So to work this out further, I'm actually going to copy and paste this down below so that we've more space and you can just see clearly exactly what I'm doing. So I'm going to paste it in here where we have the space because now I'm going to have to do some indices work and some algebra manipulation. So what I'm going to have here then is I'm going to have my half. That's not going to change, but I could rewrite this out using indice rules as sine x to the power of minus a half all of that to the power of minus half all over cos or rather one minus cos so one minus cos x to the minus a half and that's multiplied then by minus one all over one minus cos x now why have I written it like this well in writing it like this it allows me to apply the indice laws um, that say that if you have two things with the same base multiplied together, then what happens is we add the powers. So we're going to add minus a half and one because when we multiply these, they're the same base. So we're going to have um, on the top, we've one by sine x to the minus a half multiplied by minus one. So what I get is I get minus one sine x to the power of minus a half. And on the bottom, I'm going to get then one minus cos x and we're going to add those two together and we're going to get a half. So when we add them together we get one half. So what we must do now is remember as well that we have that two being multiplied in. So this is what I have on the top and on the bottom. Now to the power of a minus is going to place that um, under the line. So it's going to be the reciprocal. So what we have on the bottom here going to start turning those halves back into square roots, is the square root of um, 1 minus cos x by the square root of sin x. And there, that's our final answer.